No, we can use the legs, just not this the way this motion does it. Not with this motion. Not with this motion. Okay. Yes. Okay, so it's laying horizontally behind. And now I'm going to probably stop it for one, one more spot here if I do this right. Let's keep moving. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Um, actually, what is that? It's a tricep brachii muscle. I'm going to back it up and I'm going to just follow this again. Um, because this is a ballistic action, but I want to go back. Okay, now I'll stop again. And then see if I can play in. Just watch that tricep. In a ballistic action, which is what baseball pitching is, or punting, or anything that is an explosive kind of movement, you contract the muscle that is going to perform the action, then you shut it down, uh, actually before it's fully completed, because you've got to start decelerating the joint. Okay? So let's uh, see what we do, do here. Watch that. Watch that. Uh, did I not get you? Oh, there we go. I guess I got to, uh, it's off. See, it's, it's off already, which means it never was on. And we know it was never on because we were using the brachialis muscle. Remember? The coronoid process enlarged because of brachialis, so I wasn't using the tricep. I called that at the time uh, tricep uh, brachii flop or something of that nature. The muscle is, is of no function in the traditional pitching motion. Okay, now one last little thing. There, and now release. Never contracts, yeah, we said that. Oh, right there. Look at the hand. What's that hand doing there? It, it was up here, and now, let me see if I'll get this. It was up here, and now it's like this. See that? And I'm going, I, can't frame, I can't frame by frame show it, but watch what it, what it, watch what it does when I turn it. See it? Turn sideways. Did you see that? See how it looked this way? What is that action? Pronation. That's pronation. On the fastball, I pronated before, during, and after release. Immediately. It wasn't delayed. It was immediate. So that means I didn't bang the bones to back my elbow together throwing the fastball. All right? I think this is the slider I'm throwing here. Did it say that? I wasn't watching. And we're going to go, this one I think is pretty, because the only question we're trying to answer now is what, why am I banging the back of my elbow? If I'm pronating my release, I'm not banging it. Well, here's the supination. I, I guess we just watch the fastball one more time. Here's the slider that I threw at that time. These are all the classifications. They're all the same. Everything will look pretty much the same. Here's, and here's the release. Can't see too well because we were indoors and we didn't have enough lights to show this as well as we wanted. There's release. And you'll see the shadow of the ball coming by as a slider. And then the recovery of the body and everything. I'll just look this side. Again, I'm going to let it go, but I'm going to stop it at the moment that we need to see. Take pitching forearm turnover starts. Boom. That glove foot lands. Nothing's moving forward. Now we're going to circle around and fly out. There we are. And, and then release. All right. Well, that's good. Have, have the arrow right over top of it. It shows that the thumb's on top, like this. Now, on the other one, remember how quickly the hand turned out? So watch it this time. Watch what the hand does. Uh, okay. See, it didn't turn out. Did you, did you see that? Did you all catch that? Uh, I know. You know. When I'm looking frame by frame in my videos, it's easier to see. So here. But what happened here is on the slider, my hand was like this, 
and then it continued like that, and then it started to turn. It didn't start to pronate right away, which means the pronation was some kind of uh, uh, an action that occurs naturally later, but in order to get it to happen immediately, it has to be a voluntary activity. So by supinating the release, by not pronating immediately, I was banging the back of my elbow, hence I was pounding, uh, causing the calcification of the uh, electronon fossa. Okay? This is back in 1967. I've been telling everybody about this since 1967. This is 2010, 43 years later, and they're still teaching curveballs and sliders by supinating the release and wondering why pictures are losing the extension flexion range of motion. A do team doctor for the St. Louis Cardinals, in fact, wrote a report about this where he tested thir 33 of the pictures in the Cardinals chain, and he found that they all lost an average of five degrees of extension and flexion range of motion, but these were young pitchers, just starting. And his answer was, eh, it doesn't seem to bother the pitching. Well, let me tell you something. If that were a leg, I couldn't walk. You know, what could I do with a leg like that? I don't like this. I don't like that I can't touch my arm. I don't like that I can't straighten up. It is a, you know, it's a deformed arm. It certainly affected my pitching. I can't straighten that arm out as far as powerfully. You know, it only goes that far. Well, this one goes all the way out. I don't, I'd like to have that extra inch or two of, of reach where I could buy force to the ball. There's no reason for it to happen. Okay, I'm going to take these problems uh, one, at a, one at a time. That is an injury. We prevent the banging of the back of the arm the bones together by pronating the release. Simple. Teach your pitchers how to pronate the release of all pitchers. Sliders you pronate. I learned to do that right away, how to pronate the release of a slider. I'd take the baseball and I would spin it this way, drive it down, and that would give me the spiral spin of a slider. Okay? And I teach my kids how to throw a curveball today by doing this action, taking that top seam and uh, turning that top seam down, pronating the release of a curveball. So there's no reason to uh, throw a slider and a, or a curveball by supinating the release and banging the bones in the back of your elbow together. Or a cut fastball. I teach my pitchers how to throw a fastball with their hand in, hand in this position. The ball comes off the inside, and they throw it like a fastball so that they pronate the release. Actually, they pronate the release of the fastball that moves this way more powerfully than any other pitch that they do. So we can eliminate that injury by teaching that, those pitches and that skill in a different way. How do we eliminate uh, rupturing the ulnar collateral ligament? Well, you can't have the upper arm going to uh, shoulder height first. You have to bring the hand down and get the hand up to drive line height before the upper arm gets to shoulder height. It's as simple as that. To do that, don't take the ball out of your glove with your hand on top of the ball. Take the ball or glove, hand it in the ball, under the ball, drop it out, swing it down, swing it right straight back towards second base. When you get 45 degrees behind you, you turn your thumb up, you're here. I call this a pendulum swing. You can see how difficult it is to perform. Really a complicated action. You take any eight-year-old, he can do this instantly. You get an 18-year-old, and he'll have forever to get it out of him. Because he's been doing this all of his life. This. It doesn't even make sense looking at it now, does it? Don't you see what's going on? What kind of a sense is this? And what sense does it take it way back there? Because all I'm doing to take my arm over here is I have to get it back to my pitching arm side of my body. And so I'm back here and I'm going really hard. And then I got to stop it and I got to redirect the force toward home plate. All that force is wasted. I don't have force going sideways. Why? Only the force in the x-axis, straight toward home plate, counts, not side to side. All right? It's a waste of force energy, and it's injurious. And this force, when I had, had my arm in what I call maximum pitching forearm acceleration, actually my arm was flying out at that point, going out wide here, and I was using my brachialis to stop it, whereas if I took my arm straight back towards second base, and I got in that same position, I'm trying to straight forward. Now I can use the tricep to extend my arm because I don't need to stop 
the force, the lateral force, in order to return the ball toward home plate. Does that all make sense to you all? You, you see how uh, we can change how we use the arm, and we're going to be more efficient and more effective as a result. What if you on the break point, what if you just bring the hand? That's what they teach, that's and that's wrong. Don't that's do wrong. that. Why would you want to have your hand pointing towards second base when I can't throw it to home plate that way? I sort of like to have my hand pointing toward home plate so that when I come up, I go to home plate, not this way. But that's what they teach. They well, teach all kinds of weird place. stuff. And you ask them why, and they will say, well, that's how we've always done it. Seriously, that's what they'll say. What's that's why we've always done it. What if you break and you've got the ball pointing towards the plate? Well, then your hand's going to drop down even more. You, you, if you get your hand up above uh, drive line height, you've got to drop down to it. So the idea is don't ever go above it, and that way you'll, you'll save the up and down inconsistency as well. Let me show you a guy that does it really well. You want me to shut that off and put the new one? Yeah, just yeah, you got another yeah, one take one. that out. Oh, okay. you would, Absolutely. Notice how I got out of having to do that myself because I have no idea what I'm doing. Actually, I'll slide this beauty right in there. Thank you. Okay, now. The injury is free and uh, biomechanically and anatomically the correct way to pitch is this way. This is a screwball. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> yeah, got somebody jealous of you. Watch that pitch. Now, here, watch the periodic pendulum swing. Look at him, get it to driveline height. He's got a little bit of excess movement there that we don't like. That'll prevent him to be vertical at release. But well, wasn't that a nice, clean pendulum swing? Look at that. Clean. And now here's slow motion. Now watch what he's going to do, a drop step. And notice that he throws the ball, releases the ball pretty much over uh, where his foot was. Now if he could get more vertical with his forearm, he didn't have that little grab, he could even be more outside. Here's a high-speed film of it. I'm not going to stop this. Oh, I got to him. What's what am I talking about? I got to stop it right here. Look at that. He has the back of the pitching upper arm. The back of the pitching upper arm. See, that's the back of the arm. That's the back of the elbow. And he is in that maximum pitching form. He has the back of the elbow. Right here, like this, pointing toward home plate. Did you see mine, Ruan? I'm out here, like this, pulling it this way. And he's got it like this. He's using his latissimus dorsi muscle. You understand how that works? Come here, Alfredo. I, I need a subject, and you're the closest here. I'm going to love to have the ladies do it, but I've worked with you before. And you all could try this and figure it out on your own. I, I, and I know I did this, though, Alfredo, early on when I met first met. If you were to have his arm out like this and using the pectoralis major muscle, I'd right, apply force to me. Give me what you got. There. Okay. Now, if I turn it and I put it up here, now apply force to me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> That's the latissimus dorsi versus the pectoralis major. It is much more powerful. It's powerful. He, he, he can drive me in the ground. He's just being nice. Turn the back of the pitching upper arm to face forward like that. And see, latissimus dorsi does this action. This action is what? Extension, right? Shoulder joint extension. What is it if I bring the arm all the way up here, beyond vertical, and I move it this way? It's still extension. I'm using latissimus dorsi, but I'm using what apparently is a back muscle as an accelerator muscle. Okay? That's how you bring in the latissimus dorsi. And look at how beautifully, absolutely beautiful. And look at the glove arm work. And look at the hip work. Look at the tightness of the knee. It's beautiful, except for that little grab that I showed you on the rear view where he, where he took the ball aside, by taking it a little bit more laterally behind his body like that, it prevented him to have a perfectly vertical forearm at release. If he would make that little correction, this would be a fabulous pitching motion. Absolutely gorgeous. I just love looking at that. I stand here and look at that all day. Let's see where he goes from here. 
And this is 500 frames a second. Uh, that's a cam 